Welcome back uh, everyone. In this lecture actually uh, we will uh, study the finite dimensional representation theory of SL2C. So, I will begin with uh, classifying uh, finite dimensional irreducible representations of SL2C. So, then uh, later in the next lecture it may not be possible to prove in this lecture, maybe in the next lecture I will prove the complete reducibility uh, for finite dimensional representations of SL2C. So, let us start. Uh, so, we are only interested in this uh, finite dimensional representations. So, let us take uh, okay, let, let us first uh, fix some notations. Let us start with uh, what is SL2C. So, this lecture will be like a self uh, uh, self con contained okay. We do not need any any knowledge from earlier lectures. So, SL2C is nothing but it is a uh, 2 by 2 trace 0 matrices over complex numbers. So, you start with all matrices 2 by 2 such that the trace of that matrix is 0. Okay. So, then we know that the dimension of this SL to C over C is actually 3 and it is uh, spanned by the following uh, elements. So, SL to C is spanned by call it x, h and y where x is this upper triangular matrix, h is this diagonal matrix 1 minus 1 and y is uh, this lower triangular matrix. So, this is actually a form of basis over C. So, this uh, form of basis SL to C. So, now uh, we have already did some computation. So, if we actually write down the commuted commuted actually of these elements. So, then we get following uh, table. So, if we just take let us first write down what happens if I apply h on x. So, h x must be 2 x and then h y must be minus 2 y and then h h is 0. Okay. So, similarly we can actually write down table for other things. So, x y will be just h and x x is 0 and uh, x h will be actually minus 2 x. So, similar to that you have y x which is uh, minus h, y h is 2 y and then y y is 0. Okay. So, we will fix this order. Okay. We take this ordered basis x h and y. Then with respect to that you can see that. Uh, so, what will be the matrix of this add h. Okay. If you call this is uh, B. So, then uh, the matrix of add h with respect to this basis so, h x is 2 x and then h h is 0 and h y is minus 2 y. So, this is actually diagonal matrix given by this okay, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So, this is diagonal. So, that means add h acts diagonally on S L to C, but okay, that is what we get. So, similarly, if you just compute the matrix of add x with respect to the same basis you get this upper triangular matrix. And similarly for add y we get this lower triangular matrix. Okay, so, this is just immediate from this uh, table. So, with from this table you can just write down this. So, this implies so there are following uh, observations. So, this add h is actually semi simple or diagonalizable or semi simple. Add x and add y. 
so both are nil potent so this is the observation that we are making okay we are looking at this adjoint action okay and then we are seeing that add h is diagonalizable and add x add y both are nil potent so this will be actually useful later so i will actually make the connection uh, between uh, these things and uh, how uh, this element h, x and y act on any given finite dimensional space. So, for that we need complete reducibility, but anyway let us see how uh, these elements actually act on given irreducible representation. So, using uh, this uh, information we can actually classify all finite dimensional irreducible representation of SL 2 C. So, that is our goal. So, our goal in this lecture okay classify all finite dimensional irreducible representations of SL 2 C. Okay. So, let us start with some arbitrary representation and then see what we can actually uh, say about that representation. So, let us fix some notation again we start with uh, V finite dimensional irreducible representation of SL 2 C. Okay. So, that means each element in, in particularly the basis elements x, h, y they all act on V okay. and the commutator relation should be actually satisfied. So, now uh, so what we do like we take uh, the action of h on V and then try to understand what happens. Okay. So, first focus on the action of H on capital V. Okay. So, since we are working over complex numbers our ground field is algebraically closed this H must have some Eigen value. Okay. So, let us say mu is an Eigen value okay. mu is an Eigen value of H. Okay, because if you take the characteristic polynomial of H, uh, so that should have some root in over C. So, that is what I am calling it Eigen value. So, in particularly, so there will be a corresponding Eigen vector corresponding to mu. Okay, there exists some V non zero inside capital V such that this action of H on V is given by mu V. Okay, this is the meaning of mu being Eigen value. Okay. So, what we do we also fix some notation we say V gamma to be the gamma th Eigen space of H. Okay. So, this is the gamma th Eigen space of H. So, what is the meaning of that? So, this is uh, those vectors W in capital V such that H acts on W by this gamma W. Okay. So, if you consider those vectors, so we are not saying that this V gamma must be non-zero. Okay. So, this is well defined space it could be 0. When if it, when this is non-zero the gamma becomes Eigen value for H. Okay. Okay. Note that V gamma non-zero implies gamma is an Eigen value of H. Okay. But you know that there are only finitely many Eigen values. So, only for finitely many gamma this V gamma can be non-zero. So, now uh, this mu is actually an Eigen value. So, so we have this V which is uh, corresponding Eigen vector. Now, if we take uh, this uh, V to be Eigen vector corresponding to the Eigen value mu. So, we want to see how this X and Y acts on V. So, let us first see how x acts. Okay. So, here is a small computation. So, we want to understand how x acts on V. So, for that we will just use the commutator relation and then see how it acts. So, indeed if you compute H acting on this x V then using the commutator relation we get x acting on this H V. So, then 
there will be a error term so that is given by the commutator so that is hx dot v. So, recall the bracket hx is nothing but 2x ok. So, in particularly uh, so this is also the bracket hx can be written as hx minus xh. So, whenever you just commute these two actions then you will get 2xx like cost or the error term. So, in particularly by looking at this formula what you are getting, so if you apply h on x v then you get because h v is already h v is already mu v. So, that implies that uh, this first term becomes mu times x v plus this second term becomes because bracket h x is nothing but 2 x. So, this becomes 2 x v. So, in particularly what we get h acting on x v is nothing but mu plus 2 x v. So, what we indeed proved, so if we take v mu which is the mu eigen space of this uh, action of h, then if I apply x on this v mu, then this takes this v mu to v u mu plus 2. So, this is what we have proved. Okay. And this is true for any mu eigen space. So, of course, if v mu is 0, then it is obviously true. When v mu is non zero, the earlier calculation says that uh, x actually maps v mu to v mu plus 2. So, similarly, one can do uh, calculation for y. So, then what we get if you do the calculation again, we compute the h action on y v, then we can see that this is just exactly y of h v plus the bracket x y v which is exactly equal to mu minus 2 y v. So, that means, so this uh, uh, y takes the Eigen space v mu to v v mu minus 2, the Eigen space corresponding to mu minus 2. So, this is again another important observation. So, what we have observed? So, if we take mu eigen space of h, then x maps that mu eigen space to mu plus 2 eigen space and similarly y maps mu eigen space to mu minus 2 eigen space. Now, uh, v is given to be finite dimensional okay. since dimension of v is finite. So, we should have some k in z plus such that this uh, mu plus 2 k plus 1 is not an Eigen value ok, is not an Eigen value of h. So, we just saw that if you apply like uh, if you start with the mu th Eigen value Eigen vector, if you apply x then you get mu plus 2 Eigen vector. And similarly, if you keep applying x, so you will be getting mu plus 4, mu plus 6 and so on those kind of eigenvectors. But at some point this x has to actually kill that uh, the some power of x has to kill v because we are actually working with finite dimensional space. So, recall this fact from elementary linear algebra, if you have vectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues. So, then those vectors must be linearly independent ok. So, that is uh, something uh, one, one actually knows from linear algebra. I will leave it as exercise to check suppose uh, you have an operator acting on v ok. So, let us assume dimension of v is finite then if uh, lambda 1 etcetera lambda r are distinct Eigen values of t and v 1 etcetera v r are corresponding Eigen vectors. Then one can prove that this v 1 etcetera v r must be linearly independent ok. 
So, now this obviously if mu is Eigen value for h then mu plus 2, mu plus 4 and so on they are all like distinct Eigen values if they are Eigen values ok. So, that is why you get some k in g plus such that mu plus 2 k plus 1 is not an Eigen value of h, but you can choose k minimal such that mu plus 2 k is actually Eigen value ok. So, choose k minimal with the property that mu plus 2 k plus 1 is not an Eigen value. of h. So, what does it mean? It means actually mu plus 2 k is an Eigen value. So, you can also choose such a way that this x power k v is actually non-zero. So, that uh, uh, like x power k plus 1 v. So, this corresponding to like basically the Eigen vector corresponding to x power uh, k v ok. So, what I want to say you choose k minimal maybe with the following property ok then we get uh, whatever we wanted as implication. So, choose k minimal with the property that x power k plus 1 v is 0. So, but x power k v is non 0 ok such a k we can choose because dimension v is finite dimensional. So, now uh, with that uh, k what we can do we can actually take lambda to be mu plus 2 k ok. So, then what happens then if you take uh, this v naught to be the Eigen vector corresponding to that. So, that means it is exactly this x power k v. So, then it is easy to see that this h acts on v naught as lambda v naught and x acts on v naught as 0 ok. So, we replaced uh, this v by v naught so that we got this additional property this h is acting on v naught as lambda and x actually kills this v naught. So, this kind of elements will be called maximal vectors ok of uh, weight lambda. So, this is again like maybe we will define it in uh, general finite dimensional representation of SL 2 C ok, but I will make a note. So, this kind of vectors will be called maximal vectors of weight lambda ok, again weight with respect to only h. So, now you can see that uh, we have actually created one non-zero vector uh, where h acts as lambda and x actually kills. So, we need to understand what happens if I apply y ok. Of course, if I apply y all I have is I can take y v naught. So, for sure I know that this will lie inside v lambda minus 2. Similarly, y square v naught again this will lie inside lambda minus 4 and so on. So, that is our earlier calculation says again what we can do we can choose r such that. So, now choose r again minimal such that this y power r plus 1 v naught is 0, but y power r v naught is non 0 ok. So, then you can see that if I apply like if I start this with this vector v naught ok, if I am interested in actually sub module generated by this v naught. So, what is sub module generated by v naught? Uh, it is actually a intersection of all modules that contains v naught. So, if you apply various actually uh, elements from this S L to C on v naught, so it has to be inside that uh, whatever sub module ok. So, let me call w is a module that contains actually v naught. Then what will happen because this is actually S L 2 
sub module ok. So, if I take any element of this SL2 ok then if I apply it to this V0 it has to be inside W. So, in particularly for example, if I take Xi1 and then Xi2 and so on Xik and then if I apply it on this V0 all of them should be inside W ok for any Xi1 etcetera Xik inside your SL2C. So, indeed one can prove that uh, sub module generated by V0 will be exactly collection of uh, or the span of all these vectors ok. So, we are actually interested in uh, looking at this uh, sub module generated by V0, but surprisingly because SL2 is actually a very small uh, Lie algebra and the commutator relations are actually so tight. So, if you are looking at this uh, sub module generated by this V0 it is not uh, that hard to actually find out ok. So, for example, you can actually the way we actually choose on this V0 H is going to act actually a scalar and X is going to kill. So, if you apply any powers of X that is going to kill this V0 and if you apply any powers of H, so that is going to actually leave this V0 as like it is, it is going to leave this span of V0 ok. So, then it actually somewhat suggests we need to only worry about only the powers of Y, but powers of Y we do not have any control, but we have made some choice. So, we have made a choice R such that y power r v0 is non zero but y power r plus 1 v0 is actually zero so then look at this cyclic space generated by this v0 okay using this operator y and then see what is happening so you take this space which is span of v0 y v0 and so on y power r v0 okay so this is sits inside v so call this is actually v dash so, we claim that this is actually going to be sub module generated by V0 ok. So, our claim V dash is indeed SL 2 C sub module ok. If it is SL 2 sub module then uh, because V is being irreducible, so that forces that V has to be equal to this V dash ok. So, that is why we are establishing a sub module generated by this V0 and then we are actually trying to see what, what we get. So, this is actually very explicit uh, uh, basis that we are actually establishing using this construction. So, because this V0, Y V0, etcetera, YR power V0, they all corresponds to distinct eigenvalues of H, ok. So, the V0 has Eigen value lambda v y v naught uh, corresponds to Eigen value lambda minus 2 and so on y power r v naught corresponds to Eigen value lambda minus 2 r. So, these are all h Eigen values ok. So, obviously, they are linearly independent or otherwise because we have chosen r such a way that this uh, y power r plus 1 is 0 and y power r is non 0. So, that also like uh, gives us because this is a cyclic space corresponding to this operator y. So, you can prove that uh, uh, this will be linearly independent I guess that is also true ok. So, let us move on. So, anyway because they are corresponds to distinct Eigen uh, values. So, they have to be linearly independent. So, if, if you just look at it, uh, so y obviously maps v dash to v dash because y will just increase the power. So, if you apply it on this uh, spanning set it going to increase the power. So, it will be invariant. So, there is no issue and h is also going to leave it invariant because each one of the spanning elements so they are all uh, eigen vectors for h. So, that is also fine. So, the only non-trivial thing we need to check 
what happens if I apply x ok. If you if you prove that x also leaves v dash invariant then v dash becomes uh, uh, SL2 sub module. So, let us see what happens. So, if I apply uh, on v naught it is going to give me 0. So, there is no issue. So, if I apply it on y v naught let us compute what is happening. So, then I am allowed to switch. So, I will get y x v naught plus bracket x y v naught. So, then you get since x is killing v naught. So, this is 0 plus bracket x y is actually h. So, you get h v naught. So, h v naught is nothing but lambda v naught. So, x y v naught is actually given by lambda v naught. So, this is the second term, this is the first term. So, if you compute again x y square v naught, let us see what is happening. So, this can be written as just x y y v naught. So, then this y x sorry x x y can be switched. So, this can be switched as y x applied on y v naught plus the bracket x y applied on y v naught. So, then you can see that. So, this is actually can be computed using this formula. So, then because this is actually given here. So, then this is y x y v naught which is lambda v naught plus this bracket x y is h. So, this gives h y v naught. So, then h y v naught is nothing but lambda minus 2 y v naught. So, you get lambda y v naught plus lambda minus 2 y v naught. Okay, because h is going to map v lambda to sorry v lambda minus yeah v so this is yeah I can yeah y maps v naught to uh, yeah lambda to lambda minus two eigen space so that is why you get h of y v naught is as lambda minus two y v naught so this says this is uh, x y square v naught is nothing but uh, 2 lambda minus uh, 2 okay, times y v naught. Similarly, you can actually compute y cube and then see what happens. Okay. So, let us compute and then see what happens. So, if you compute x y cube v naught then this is you can write it as again x y square sorry we have to go step by step x y y square v naught. So, then this is y x y square v naught plus you can see this is h y square v naught, but it is clear that this is already computed using induction. So, this is y 2 lambda minus 2 y v naught plus this is nothing but lambda minus 2 y square v naught ok. So, this gives me 2 lambda minus 2 plus lambda minus 2 y square v naught. So, if you just uh, compute and see this is 3 lambda minus 4 y square v naught ok. So, this actually clearly says so by induction you can prove that x y power k v naught is actually in the span of lower terms ok that is all we need to do, but it is actually saying it is actually one one term down. So, maybe I will leave it to you to check x power y k v naught. So, using now induction you can prove this is in the span of v naught y v naught etcetera y power k minus 1 v naught ok. This is true for all 1 less than or equal to k less than or equal to r. So, this proves that uh, if we take this v dash which is the span of this v naught etcetera y power v naught that is actually SL2 sub module. So, that forces this V dash to be equal to V. Okay. So, let me just write it down. So, this indeed proves this V has to be equal to span of V naught 
y v naught etc y power r v naught ok. How the action of uh, h x and y are given? So, you can easily see that if you call this v i to be y power or i v v naught. So, then it is clear that so y actually increases the power. So, it means y v i is just v i plus 1. So, that is easy to see and then h v i is actually going to give me lambda minus 2 y v i because every time h is going to act uh, by minus like it will reduces actually the eigen value ok. So, sorry this is actually so, if we just go back to the computation, uh, so what we actually seen, yeah, h y v will be just mu minus 2 y v, that is correct. Yeah, so that means, uh, so this uh, h v i will be just equal to lambda minus uh, 2 y v i and what will happen to x, again from this earlier computation, you can actually guess the formula. So, x v i will be exactly equal to i times lambda minus i plus 1 v i minus 1 ok. So, here we set actually v minus 1 to be 0 ok. So, because uh, that is used in this formula. So, only thing that is actually required to be checked. So, first formula is fine, second formula is also fine, the third formula is need some checking. So, let me do it. So, this is again by induction. So, you assume that x v i is equal to i times lambda minus i plus 1 v i minus 1 ok. Then if you just calculate what is x v i plus 1, so that is nothing but x y v i. So, then you can actually swipe these two. So, you get y x v i plus the bracket x y v i. So, then y x v i will be become ok because you can use this formula. So, this is i times lambda minus i plus 1 y v i minus 1 plus h v i. So, this is going to give me so y v i minus 1 is nothing but v i. So, this is going to give me i times lambda minus i plus 1 plus h v i will be lambda minus 2 i times v i. Okay. Then if you just group it, you can see that. So, this is going to give i plus 1 times lambda minus i v i. So, that proves that uh, this x v i plus 1 is nothing but i plus 1 lambda minus i v i. Okay. So, this actually completes the proof of this, uh, this identities. So, this actually uh, uh, proves this uh, v has to be uh, equal to the span of this v naught, y v naught, etcetera, y or v naught. Okay. So, by looking at these formulas, you can actually see that this y power r plus 1 v must be 0, okay. that is how we have chosen this r. So, y power r plus 1 v Okay, not should be 0. So, now if you just uh, look at it y power r v naught, then what happens? Okay, y power r v naught, so that must be non 0. But then if you just compute what is x v r plus 1. So, that is nothing but x applied on y power r plus 1 v naught. Okay. So, since y power r plus 1 v naught is 0, one side you get 0, but on the other side you get this formula because this is going to reduce it to 1 uh, power down. So, this is going to be r plus 1 times lambda minus r v r. Okay. So, look at this formula. 
So, that means r plus 1 times lambda minus r y r power v naught must be 0, but since this vector is non-zero that forces r plus 1 times lambda minus r is 0 and that forces lambda must be r. Okay. So, this is actually a very striking fact. Okay. So, this fact actually tells lot about what could be this eigenvalue lambda. Okay. So, basically it says it must be non-negative integer. So, this r could be 0. So, because of that, so we are actually we proved this is is indeed non-negative integer. So, this actually immediately proves the following things. So, all eigenvalues of V okay. So, with respect to okay, maybe let me write it as H eigenvalues. All H eigenvalues of V are integers. Okay. So, the, the very first actually, so this is only second, the very first assertion H acts diagonalizably on V. Okay. Second is all H and eigenvalues are integers. The third thing is the eigenvalues also can be listed. So, the eigenvalues are r, r minus 2 and so on up to like minus r plus 2 and minus r because this is corresponding to v naught, this is corresponding to v y v naught and so on, this is y r minus 1 v naught, this is y r v naught, okay. this is the correspondence. So, this also tells that what are all the eigenspaces dimensions. So, this actually proves that all eigenspaces are all one dimensional. Okay, all these facts are actually follows immediately from observing that uh, lambda must be an integer and this is indeed a basis this v naught y v naught etcetera y power r v naught is a basis of this capital V. So, let me summarize. So, this is very very important. So, if we start with uh, uh, so can we recover this r that is also one important thing. So, if you actually think about it uh, uh, this is uh, actually what is the dimension of this space. So, the dimension of space must be just r plus 1. So, this tells this r also can be recovered, this r is nothing but dimension of v minus 1. Okay. So, this r in some sense captures everything about this uh, finite dimensional irreducible representation. So, what we did? We started with finite dimensional irreducible module of this SL2C and then we established this basis for this. Uh, representation which is uh, generated by this v naught. So, v naught, y v naught etcetera, y power r v naught. Okay. So, then we actually proved that uh, how each element of uh, this basis element elements of this SL 2 C acts on this, this uh, basis uh, of this capital V. So, indeed if we denote this by v 1, v 2 etcetera, v r plus 1. Okay. So, maybe you know we denoted by v 0, v 0, v 1 and v r. Then we can see that v 0, v 1 etcetera, v r minus 1, v r is here. So, y basically maps 1, 1 up. Okay and then H maps into itself. And H x is actually mapping the other way. So, 
So, this is how the entire action is actually given. Okay. So, that you can read it from this uh, table. So, so, this all the action of y, h and x are very, very explicit on this basis. And we also observe that the highest uh, weight vector or the Eigen value. Okay. So, that must be must be an integer, okay, non-negative integer and all the rest of the Eigen values or the weights of this h. So, they are all actually uh, decreases by 2. Okay. So, you start with r, you just uh, every time you decrease by 2, then you reach minus r. Okay. And all the Eigen spaces, they are all one dimensional. So, these are all very, very important consequences of our analysis. Okay, I will uh, stop here. So, we will actually use this information to completely classify a uh, finite dimensional irreducible representation. Okay, so, I will continue that in the next lecture. Thanks.